Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of My Musical Journey, the fourth now in this series. I really appreciate you joining me. And you probably figured out by now that music is, no doubt, my most favorite thing to discuss besides the Bible and faith and spiritual matters. Music is what I like to talk about most with people, which reminds me of when I was a teenager and my mom became a little concerned. I think I was about 13 or 14 at this time. And um, she wanted to make sure I wasn't boring people by constantly talking about nothing but music with them. So she suggested I vary my conversation topics a bit. And it was from her at this time that I learned the saying, variety is the spice of life. And it's true what she said. So since I have tried to uh, implement this advice as much as possible, this is why on my Facebook profile, I try to make posts on as many different topics as possible. Um, I often post photos taken of myself going certain places and doing certain things, or I also try to throw in some jokes and inspirational writing here and there. I post all my YouTube content on Facebook so that people know it's out there. And I also make a lot of reels now. As of more recently, I started making reels to uh, help advertise this series so that more people can be aware of it. But all that to say, I try to make my Facebook post as varied as possible, but music still remains my most favorite thing to talk about. And this is why I'm enjoying so much putting out this series of videos, and I hope you enjoy listening to them and viewing them. Now, today I want to talk about two specific things in this episode. One is the importance of dynamics, particularly in recording. Now, dynamics are also very important when performing live. But today we're going to focus on how important they are in, in recording. And here's how I found out about the importance of dynamics in recording. About two and a half years ago, before I started using GarageBand, my brother and I wanted to launch into recording. So we purchased the Pro Tools program and installed it on a PC we have here. And our first and probably about our only attempt to record anything serious was um, we tried to make the initial recording of my song, Thank You. Now, I believe I left the finished product of that song recorded with GarageBand. I left the link to that in the video description of the previous episode in this series, so you can find it there. And... Now with with Pro Tools, we were trying to make, we were trying to record this song for the first time ever. And we managed to do so, but as we were listening to it, my brother said something that, well, he pointed out something that I wasn't really aware of. He said, this song is really lacking in dynamics. It sounds quite samey and monotonous for the most part. And I didn't really, this was kind of hard to hear. I didn't really understand what he meant until we went downstairs later that day to the kitchen where we prepared dinner. And as we were preparing our dinner, we were listening to some music. Uh, I think we put on Pandora and the Zac Brown Band song came on, Chicken Fry, a great country song that I'm sure many of you know, probably one of my top favorite country songs. And throughout the song, he was pointing out how the sound is adjusted on different parts, which makes it interesting. He pointed out how the song, um, like on the verses, the instrumentation was real simple and quiet and soft, and so were the vocals, whereas things were a lot more full and powerful on the chorus. And this is what he explained, that this is what he meant by dynamics, that this was what the song we were recording was really lacking in. And the more I tuned into detail, because I listened to this song a few times after this incident, and the more I tuned into detail, 
the more I realized how right he was. And I also began to listen to lots of other music and likewise realized how important dynamics are to well-produced music. So therefore I try to apply this very same principle henceforth on the recording of my songs. Uh, I usually keep the instrumentation very simple and soft on the verses and the vocals as well. And then I come in more strong and full on the chorus with more instruments, more vocals, etc., etc. So this has really helped improve the quality of my music. And um, I know that for those of you who are just barely launching into recording, this is something really good to take into account. When you listen to music, really try to tune into detail, especially in regards to dynamics, and you'll find out how much you can learn that will really increase the, the quality of the music you're making. So having mentioned that, I want to go on to recording vocals. Oh, but before I do, I want to mention that I refer to Garage Band a lot because this is the best, this is the recording app that I know how to use best since it's more accessible for me. Um, since I'm blind, I need to use a screen reader. Now, if, if some of you viewing this video are using different apps, that's great. That's fine. I'm sure there are still things you can get from these videos which will help you in your recording, regardless of the app you're using. But I'm just explaining the reason I'm always mentioning GarageBand because it's the app I know how to use best. Now moving on to recording vocals. Um, I used to use an external mic that I would hooked up to that I would hook up to the iRig. The iRig I mentioned what that is and what I use it for in the first episode. Um, you can go back to that if if you need a refresher or if you haven't heard it before. Um, but eventually that mic gave out on me. So I decided to check and see if there was a built-in mic on the GarageBand app in iPhone. And I was very happy to find out that there was. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out also that the sound quality of this mic on GarageBand is far better than that of the mic I had previously been using. Um, it's really clear and it doesn't pop, so I don't need to put a pop shield on it like I had to with the external mic. That would have been pretty hard anyway to put a pop shield on the screen of the phone. So thankfully, I didn't need one with this mic in uh, the GarageBand app. And this is really great, especially when you put effects on the voice. Uh, this is another thing that I think I mentioned in the earlier episode, I think it was the first, how important it was to put, how important it is rather, how important I found out it is to put effects on the voice. This is something I really didn't think was so important in the beginning. This is another thing that this first song that my brother and I were recording was seriously lacking, effects on the voice, because I just didn't think it was necessary. But now I realize that uh, no matter how well we sing, effects are indispensable to making our voice sound rich and full and um, on key, especially when we use effects like pitch control to help us stay on key, like I previously talked about. Uh, I really like to use reverb, and I usually put that up to about 8% when I'm recording, uh, somewhere between 8 and 10 in there. That's my preference. Now, uh, I'm sure there are different preferences from person to person, so just choose whatever you think sounds good, but I'm just being specific about what works best for me. I usually put the volume of the reverb to about uh, between 8 and 10%. That, 
that's what sounds best to me. Now, when I turn on the monitor uh, so that I can hear myself through the headphones, as soon as I do, there comes out a bit of a fuzz sound, kind of like an old cassette tape does when, or it used to do when you turn it on. I'm sure some of you, or most of you remember what that sounded like. Um, and also any kind of background sound is picked up. This is a very sensitive mic. Therefore, whenever I record vocals, I choose to do so at a time of day or night even when it's as quiet as it could be, when there's little to no background sound that can be picked up. I also have to be very careful about not breathing too loud or um, making a lot of movement that could be picked up because this is a very, very sensitive mic. Now, also when I'm recording vocals, uh, before doing so, I lay as much of the, okay, I lay down as many of the music tracks as possible, like all the basic ones, because for one thing, uh, the music helps me, helps guide me when I'm recording the vocals. I got to be able to sing along with something. Now, because of that fuzz I mentioned, uh, especially if the song has a musical intro and the vocals don't come in first, I don't press record before the music starts. Otherwise, that fuzz is going to be heard very clearly and loudly, which would really put a damper on the song. Instead, I try to get past the intro and get as close as possible to the part where the vocals come in, even if I have to take a deep breath before pressing the record button and then start singing right away when I do. Um, this helps the fuzz not to be so apparent. And also when there is a musical break in the song, anywhere in the song, uh, especially if it's if it lasts a while, I turn off the the voice recording. I leave the monitor on so I can still hear myself, but I stop the recording and then let the music play past the break. And again, I get as close as possible to the part where I'm going to start singing once more. And I continue. And then if there's a long... Uh, if there's like a, a long musical ending, then I don't let the vocal recording play until the song ends. I stop it beforehand so that that fuzz is not heard. Now, if the vocals come in either first or if they come in real abruptly along with the, the music, in that case... I still get as close as possible to um, the spot I want to start singing on before pressing record. And then I got to be ready to start singing right away. Now this takes a little work and I hope I'm explaining myself clearly. If you don't understand exactly what I mean, if you have any questions about this, like I always say, you can leave your comments and questions uh, below and I'd be happy to answer them, even in future videos. But this does take a little work, but it's worthwhile because it helps the sound quality to be the best it possibly could be in our songs. Uh, now, I'm going to leave two links in the video description of this episode. One link will be my cover song called The Dream Never Dies, a Cooper Brothers cover, and an old gospel song. Now, I'm leaving this to demonstrate the following. Now, this recording was really good overall, but just one thing I realized I could have done differently is that um, I turned the voice recording 
on a long ways before the music started. So you hear that fuzz um, for quite a while, for several seconds before the piano and the vocals enter in or come in at right about the same time. Um, I want to uh, just demonstrate that as something I, I learned to avoid doing for next time. Um, and then the other link I want to leave is to another cover song I did where I got it right this time. It was another song where the vocals and the piano come in right away, but I pressed record like a second or two before I was to start singing and you could hardly hear the fuzz, just very little. So the, the first example, The Dream Never Dies, was an example of what I what I wish I could have done differently. And the second example is of what I did right. So I hope you find this uh, understandable and helpful. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. That brings us to the end of this episode. But uh, I look forward to hearing any comments or insights you want to write about. And um, also, if you've enjoyed this video, please put a like on it, comment on it, share it on social media, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Looking forward to seeing you next time, and thanks again for joining me. Bye now.